And to help us understand this trend and possible solution, we have child rights activist and lawyer Taiwa Kinami via Skype. Thank you, Taiwa, for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you. Reports from UN have said online predators put millions of children at risk during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown because they are mostly online as schools are also closed. What are your thoughts on this, Mr. Taiwo? Well, this is a genuine concern. Um, um, what, what has happened is that schools, organizations have come to meet children at home. So the question is, if people knock at your door, you don't send your children to open the door. The adult goes to open the door, check the person who is coming in to ensure that the person means well. And um, so when people come into your homes through the internet, so also it is the responsibility of parents to ensure that they check who is coming into their homes through, uh, uh, through uh, internet and ensure that the protection of children are secured. The fundamental thing is this. Because everything is happening online, insecurity also will happen online. Uh, abuse will happen online. A whole lot of things will happen online. So the same kind of security we provide offline is the kind of security we must provide online. And we are leading a conversation with parents in that area, helping them to understand basic things they need to do to ensure that their children are protected. For example, number one, Parents need to understand that they cannot leave their children online without supervision. Children have the right to go online, to educate themselves, to do a lot of things, but must not be without supervision. Number two, children must be taught. The same way we taught take, teach children offline to beware of strangers, to be careful who they talk to, who they give their address to, who they give their phone numbers to. The same way children need to be taught on what to do. Then again, the organizations that are sending people home in terms of schools, these organizations have to be alive to their responsibilities to let the people they are sending, that is the teachers, to understand that you are going to families who have their private values, who have their core values, and they must be schooled in what to do in handling those children. So basically, if we pay attention to those basic things, it might help us to mitigate some of these issues that you know we, we see around. How best can, can children, maybe teenagers, be protected from online sexual abuse or, or bullying during this time? Talking about predatorial yes. tendencies and activities online. Okay. Now, the, now the number one thing is this. Now, so what are the people who bully children? Children bully children. Adults bully children. Now, the number one thing to do is for children to understand. We need to teach our young people, number one, resilience. They need to understand that it is not everything that somebody says to them that they must take to heart. So now this is easier said than done. It, you don't do that through a statement. It also, have, it also includes how you treat your own children, how you talk to them, how you have built them to have inner capacity, emotional balance. You know, it has also been said that through, through, during this lockdown, what we call uh, a domestic violence has skyrocketed. So you find children also observing and becoming part of this, uh, of, 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 of uh, being affected by domestic violence. So all of these are things that we need to shield children away from so that if they encounter anything online, they can be able to hold their own. Number two, children need to understand that when you go online, there's what we call online footprint. They have to be careful the kind of online they want to leave they want to leave the, the kind of footprint they want to leave online. Then again, we must teach our children to be responsible online. Being young does not mean being responsible. Being young does not mean you are realizing for life. Being young does not mean you have time. Being young does not mean you are immune against the consequences of your actions. Children need to understand that. Then lastly, we need to supervise our children because a child is anybody below 18 years old. So if a child is anybody below 18 years old, we need to supervise. We need to have control over where our children go online. If we give them a phone, we have to be sure that they have the inner capacity, the emotional capacity, the moral capacity to handle that phone. Children have a major role to play in their personal safety and self-protection. And that is why, at our own end, we have decided to reach out to children. We reach out to children twice a week, trying on our platforms, trying to talk to them, trying to reach them, trying to let them understand how to handle all of these things because it will answer to knowledge. Knowledge is what to do. It will answer to skill. Skill is how to do it. It will answer to fortitude. Fortitude is the inner strength to do that which you know you should do. 
We've also seen increasing report of physical sexual abuse of people who are forced to remain with their abusers. As a result of the lockdown, what's to be done to ensure their safety in these times? Well, let me quickly say that the law of Nigeria is not suspended because of the lockdown. So nobody is forced to stay with the abuser. Nobody, except the person chooses to. The greatest strength of the abuser is the silence of the abused. So what do we need to do? Uh, people must be taught, children, adults must be taught that there are, for example, if you're in Lagos State, there are numbers you can, you can call. Domestic and sexual violence response, response team in Lagos State is at work 24-7, rescuing people, working with children, working with women, working with men. So if you go online, and you Google their and you Google their their name, domestic and sexual violence response team. You will see it there. I believe that such organization also exists in different states. I cannot speak for other states because I'm I'm in Lagos State. Then again, there is child protection network. Child protection network is in the 30 states of the federation. If you go online, you can get you can get the number of coordinators. In the child protection network is the initiative of UNICEF, and so they are. The organization is available. I'm a member of the organization also to respond to to issues. Our own organization and our NGO, uh, 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 Safe for Children Society, we are also available. We have developed a manual, an ebook for it's free for parents to 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 read, to understand how to protect their children at this time, to know who they call, who to call if they are in trouble. Finally, Mr. Tyro, most parents are completely snowed under having to work at home and also engaged in online work activities. How can one notice when a child is being abused online? Well, I think the number one thing is relationship. You know, we must have a relationship with our children. Instructions, when we give instruction to our children without relationship, we lead to rebellion. We must be interested in our children. You know, in our e-book, we, we, we give children, we give parents guidelines. What do you need to do? Children are also human beings. They are persons. They have issues. There's their disposition to this lockdown. For example, a child who has witnessed other people's birthday in school, who has seen how other people rejoice with his or her mate in school. Now it's his or her birthday. He, he or she cannot celebrate that with his friends. We have to find a way to ensure that he or she does not miss that period. We know this season is very tough on parents. It is not easy. But parents must understand that it's tougher on children because while parents are able to grapple with what is going on, understand it, children are trying to understand. And research has found that children have more to say that they are allowed to say. Children feel more that they are allowed to, than they are allowed to express. So we must make it a point of duty to empower our children to be there for them, to start conversations with them. When we start conversations with them, whatever our finding is, during those conversations, we must be interested in discussing those conversations. Some of the things they are saying, we may not have answers to. We may not know what to say. We may not know what to do. We must always know who to call. And, 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 and um, uh, when you call someone, you must be open as to what the issues are and what information you want to find out. Oh, you know, we put out a notice on our platform to say, what are you finding this time? And we have gotten interesting responses, and we have been able to respond to parents on how to handle some of the issues they are dealing with. All right, Mr. Watch out. Ken, I'm a child right activist and legal practitioner. Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour and for your wonderful contribution.